training video series. <clears throat> so far what we've done is played a note, sing it back, which we call mimicking sounds. Played a phrase, sing it back, and moving more, uh, playing more notes in a phrase and singing them back, and committing these phrases to memory. We've also played phrases and sang them back. Um, we've also played a note and sang an interval above that note and then below that note. And the last thing we did was the chromatic alphabet, ascending in sharps and descending in flats. And what we're going to do, we're going to expand on that idea. This time we're going to use the cycle of keys. And what is the cycle of keys? Basically, the cycle of keys is just a little map that we can use to understand the order of sharps and understand the order of flats and how many sharps and flats are in each key. But it is a lot more than that. You can, if you look at the map, you can see two five one progressions, one four five progressions, tritone substitution, and a whole lot more. But don't worry too much about the theory side of it. Basically, what we want to get out of it is the order. Okay, we want to get the note order, so C, G, D, A, E, and sing our notes and sing those notes within one octave. So the cyclic keys basically. Um, you have the key of C, no sharps or flats. You have G with one sharp, D with two, A with three, E with four, B with five, and F sharp with six. And if we go anti-clockwise, we get F with one, B flat with two, E flat with three, A flat with four, uh, D flat with five, and G flat with six. G flat and F sharp are enharmonic. They're the same note. They just have different spellings for different contexts. Don't worry about the theory side of it. As I said, we just want to get the order of it. So basically, we're going to sing it within one octave. So that way, our interval will go up and it'll go down. <clears throat> so we can get used to this whole fourth and fifth type interval, which will help you hear chord progressions. And this was the big breakthrough for me, learning to sing this cycle of keys on, on your strings, uh, on each string or within one octave on any instrument. It really, really paid off for me and helped me to hear bass lines a lot easier and the way bass lines were traveling within songs. So let's sing this octave here, um, starting with C. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, F. Now, let's go backwards. Let's go anti-clockwise now. So we're going C, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp, B, E, A, B, G, C. Okay, once you get used to that, doing it on one string, move it onto the A string or move your octave up or down, whichever way you want to go. So you could do it between F and F, F sharp and F sharp, G and G, but basically when you move it up a string on a guitar, you're moving up a fourth. So you're going to now go from A up to A, which is A to A on the guitar. So we've moved it and we're, we're missing out on these notes. So instead of going down to any of these notes, now we're going to go up to those notes when we do that. So basically we've got C, G, D, A, D, D, F sharp, D flat, A flat, E flat, G flat, F. So we've got that order there. So you can do the, again the opposite way. But once you get used to that, just start with um, going clockwise on the E string and getting used to that sound first. Okay, so on C, G, D, A, E, B. Um, if you know the notes, you can stop say, saying the notes while, while you're playing it and just sing a da, you know, so da, 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 da. Okay, so you get used to singing these notes before you even play it. Okay, so Okay, and that will really, really help your ear out.
out a great deal. And I get my all my guitar students to do this for many reasons. One, they learn the notes within that octave. They learn the notes on their low uh, E and A strings, so it helps them with their root notes for these basic bar chords, scales, and arpeggios. And it's really good for your ear if you sing it. Um, like I said, it was that was the main thing that really helped my ear and get me happy with working out songs and working out bass lines. It was the thing that really helped me get it happening. So if you start singing that that cycle. I guarantee if you did it every day and just go through that cycle a couple of times and get used to it and start trying to sing it without your guitar you or your instrument, you will learn that sound and it'll help you with how you can hear bass lines in songs. You'll start hearing the chord movement go, oh, that went down a fourth, or that went down a fifth. You'll start hearing that within the songs um, that, that you're listening to. So give that a go and then next lesson we'll do more and expand on that in the next video. So enjoy that. Thank you.